My least favorite Mario Kart track of all time is Vanilla Lake 2 from Super Mario Kart. That's right, we are jumping straight into the video, no intro, no nothing, just right into the rankings. We got a lot to cover today, everyone, and that's right, I am redoing my top 145 Mario Kart tracks of all time because... There has been no new marker tracks that come out. I'm not doing the tour tracks because that is an ongoing game at the moment. So I figured why not re-rank all 145 tracks. And after playing this track for the recording, I realized there is no worse track. This is hardly even a track. It can hardly qualify for one because of how difficult, how much of an obstacle course there is. And there's not even any road to begin with. You got some ice patches here and there that you can drive on. The ice bricks are in the most inconvenient spot ever, and this is just an extremely frustrating track. I would not recommend anyone play this. And just because this track is not at the very bottom of the list anymore doesn't mean it's a good track. This is still a really bad track that I do not enjoy playing. This is Donut Plains 3 from Super Mario Kart. Yes, yeah, Super Mario Kart has a few good tracks, has a few bad tracks, and this is one of the worst. Not the worst anymore, but you still have the bridge that you have to worry about. You still have these crazy tight turns, Monty Moles jumping at you everywhere left and right, and you also got the picket fences, the colored brick walls that can completely ruin your race if you take a wrong turn, and they stick out farther than ever compared to any of the other donut planes. This is a track, once again, that feels more like an obstacle course than a racetrack, and I get it, Super Mario Kart was very limiting, and it was a very accomplishing game, but this track, 20 plus years later, is just not something I would enjoy playing. Coming in at 143, we have Cheap Cheap Lagoon from Mario Kart 7. Yes, this is the first non-Super Mario Kart track in this list. And for good reason, this track is mainly meant to show off the underwater mechanics for Mario Kart 7. Now unlike its counterpart, Rock Rock Mountain, which was meant to show off the glider mechanics, we'll get to that later, not in this video particularly, but this track just does not do a great job of that. Like most underwater levels, they're very slow, they drag on, they're boring, and this one is more of the same. When you're underwater in this track, it's just a big, vast open area. There's not many obstacles to look after. You just see a bunch of clams lying around. There's no real enemies to worry about. There's nowhere you can fall off on this track. So the difficulty is just not there, and I just find this track boring and uninspired. Now at 142, we have another ice track. This is Sherbet Land from Mario Kart 64. If you take a look, this track dipped four spots from my 2017 ranking almost five years ago. And while it's not an entirely difficult track, the ice physics combined with the sheer blandness of the gray walls and the blue rock and the gray water and just the polygons everywhere, it does not look pretty whatsoever. The developers almost seem like they threw this together and chucked penguins on here. I don't know. I'm not trying to discredit the developers or anything, but I don't really have a fun time when racing on Sherbet Land, whether it's by myself or against computers or friends. This track, again, is very big and spacious, and there's just not too much to say about it and that's why it has to be down here. From one unmemorable track to another, we have Yoshi Desert from Mario Kart Super Circuit, the first GBA track on this list. Now this track actually jumped a few spots from my previous rankings five years ago, and yes, it is a pretty difficult track being the third track in the Star Cup of Super Circuit, so understandably it is going to be tricky, but this track just does not do anything for me. How many of you guys, when recounting the Mario Kart Super Circuit tracks, forget this track? I know I'm one of them. There's just not a lot to it. It's basically like a cheese land that has a bit more twists and turns and with a Yoshi Sphinx in the background, which is very cute, might I add. So the detail is there, but overall, I just don't find this track fun to play. Coming in number 140, we have Moo Moo Farm from Mario Kart 64. So here we go. This is a track that is pretty much over before it starts. We've got a few enemies to the right near the fences with the Monty Moles, which can absolutely destroy you. Worse than like a bomb bomb or a spiny shell can, which is pretty incredible. But besides that, this track, again, super wide, no obstacles besides the moles, nothing to look forward to. It's just a very bland track that does not have a lot to show for it. Understandably, a very easy second track for the Mushroom Cup in Mario Kart 64, but not one I would recommend. And man, I feel bad. We have another Yoshi track here. Some of these Yoshi tracks are not getting the love they might deserve. 
but in my opinion they're just not that fun to race on. This is Yoshi Falls which is basically Moo Moo Farm's younger brother from Mario Kart DS. Just a very quick circle, a little bit more detailed, you got some waterfalls for a bit of an added challenge, but when you're racing against other people this is pretty much done in 50-60 seconds. So you get to finish the race before you even realize what just happened. If you win the race maybe you're lucky but besides that there's not much to take in here. Coming in at number 138 we have Choco Island 2. This is a Star Cup track and I think it has some medium difficulty. If you can get by it without having to run into some dirt or hit any of the piranha plants. But the problem with it is how narrow some of the sections are combined with the dirt section right here where you are automatically forced to slow down and right after that you have to recomposure yourself and get through the mini ramps before finishing the lap. It's a lot to uncover, I understand it for being a Star Cup track and it is pretty challenging for Super Mario Kart, but man they just throw a lot at you at once and I just don't see any entertaining races happening on here because you're too busy focusing on yourself and your own well being and trying to finish besides hitting other players for your own good. Now at this point in the video a lot of you may be stopping and commenting, Gabe you're just ranking the very difficult tracks down here at the bottom. And yes, while that may be true to an extent, these difficult tracks need to have an identity and they need to also be fun. This one only checks off maybe half of those two boxes, because this takes completely rips off Boo Lake which is a flower cup track in this exact same game and just does not feel inspired whatsoever. This feels like the Super Mario Bros Lost Levels or Mario Bros 2 to Boo Lake being just a harder and forgettable version of that track. Now this is a pretty polarizing track, we have Daisy Circuit from Mario Kart Wii, and you may not think of it at first, but this is a track that just does not mesh well with the mechanics of the game. Yes, it has one shortcut that you can low trick and get some pretty good speed boost off of, but beside that, there's not really much to think about here. It's a beautifully scenic track that is just a little bit too tight for Mario Kart Wii. And yes, I know I was complaining about tight tracks earlier, but this is a different game entirely where it actually benefits from having a more open track to fit more races. You have 12 racers in this game instead of 8, so you need a bit of a wider space and this track just doesn't deliver on any of those fronts. It's pretty boring for me. Alright, so I'm going to start with a positive with Dolphin Shoals, because there's some good to say about it. One of the great things about Dolphin Shoals is its music. Growing up with a close friend of mine who now studies jazz, I can appreciate the jazz music that goes into this track and I have to say it's one of the best jazz music tracks of the entire game for Mario Kart 8 or 8 Deluxe, whichever you prefer. But the rest of the track, the actual function, the playability, it's really not there. It's not too difficult of a track, if you know what you're doing, you just got a trick on these pipes to get ahead and then you can jump on this huge eel, which is a pretty innovative idea. I might add to myself, but in my opinion I just don't find it very fun to play. There's a lot of tight areas that you have to go around, and the underwater physics, again, are not some of my favorite and they make you slow down just a little bit, and it's one of those tracks that feels like there's a lot of ideas but they never really fully committed to a single one. So this track, yes, it tried a lot, but it's not really there for me. Coming in at 134, we have a pretty forgettable track in Luigi Circuit for Mario Kart Super Circuit. This is the first track in the third cup of the game, not the first cup of the game, the Lightning Cup, which is the only game where the Lightning Cup features Nitro tracks. So all that just goes to show that Luigi Circuit and this track in general just don't really seem to know what they're doing. Yes, Super Circuit was a pretty weird game. And it's not the greatest track to play. I do like the rain, you know, popping in and out, flashing in front of the screen, and the background is pretty interesting as well. But overall, you'll never remember this track. It's not too memorable. Coming up next, we have Donut Plains 2 from Super Mario Kart from the Super Nintendo, of course, taking the hardest hit as it falls 38 spots after being ranked 95 in 2017's rankings. Now what's the difference about this track? Well the Monty Moles are much more directly in a way so you have to worry about them and when you get hit with one in a race it is pretty much game over, say goodbye to first place especially if you're racing on 150cc and overall this track has a lot of tight turns reminiscent of Donut Plains 1 and Donut Plains 3 in particular and overall not a fan. Alright, the next Mario Kart 8 Deluxe track to appear on this list is Bone Dry Dunes. This one and Dolphin Shoals are always going to be my least two favorite tracks for reasons that are, you know, qualified for each individual track. This one just has very bland scenery as opposed to some of the visually stunning tracks you see in some of the other Mario Kart 8 Deluxe tracks. 
This one just does not have that inspiration. Yes, I know Mario Kart, each Mario Kart game needs to have their specific desert track, and this one does pretty well at being a desert track with having some unique qualities like the bone anti-gravity section and being, you know, specific to Dry Bowser. But compared to the standard of some of the other Mario Kart 8 tracks that are out there, this one really let me down, especially as the third to last track in the entire game, the entire base game that is. And it's just something that I don't really enjoy racing when there's so many other great tracks around. This is one of those tracks that might seem fun in time trials, but when you come to race it against your friends or computer players, you will most likely never return to this track. You'll probably even play Rainbow Road a couple of times before playing this track. And that is because this track is, in my opinion, the most difficult, the hardest Mario Kart track of all time. I mean, just look at it. The scenery, it's completely pitch black. All you have is this road and nothingness below. It's got some of the tightest corners and the tightest turns and some pitfalls in the middle of the track. Nothing is forgiving about this track. And it's not really too fun to race on, although I wish it was because it's quite the challenge. So one thing I've enjoyed over the past few years was how certain exclusive obstacles and challenges within a certain track really elevate the experience level of it. So Shroom Ridge is one of those tracks where I despised for the longest time. I just thought it was completely uninspired, completely boring, had nothing to it. But then you take a time to do a couple of races on Shroom Ridge. You do a couple of races with the cars coming back and forth and you understand what the purpose of the track is and that is to become a more beginner friendly type of track but with a bit of an added challenge as you're on a real world highway and Shroom Ridge does this very very well. So I appreciate the cars being there because if they weren't this track would once again be very boring and have no enemies to look out for but instead this is a now pretty fun track to play. And once again, Double Dash coming through as the last game to have a track featured on the top 145. What can I say? Double Dash's tracks are consistent. They are consistently good. And they have some specific aura about them that just makes them fun to race on when combined with the mechanics. Peach Beach, in my opinion, does the worst in this just because you don't really have a lot of memorable races here. When you're racing in time trials, it's even worse because you don't have the Cataclysm to worry about, so forget that challenge when you're racing on this track. And we've seen a lot of beach tracks in the past. This is not one of the more memorable ones, but still not bad. And in one game prior, Peach was actually featured in the intro, the beginning track of the game, having Peach Circuit be the first track of the Mushroom Cup for Mario Kart Super Circuit, dropping down three points just because once you get past that big, pink, beautiful castle in the background, there's not really much to admire about the track. It's a flat, you know, green grassy type track. We've seen these a lot over the years, and this one does really nothing to stand out. There's no enemies to worry about and the races are all pretty fast and simple. We are now entering that era of the video where we are talking about the intro, the beginning tracks of the game because a lot of them are just boring and not fun and unfortunately Mario Kart DS has one of the worst with figure 8 circuit. Now it tried something different where it decided not to tie the beginning track of the game to a character like Mario, Luigi, or Peach. But this one just didn't do well because there's not any sort of hills or elevation to worry about. There is hardly any grass, so forget any shortcuts. And overall, the races themselves aren't that memorable either because you can't do anything. Once you're in the lead, you are there for good. And if you're in the back, good luck catching up. This track does not do anything to separate itself. So Moo Moo Meadows is what I believe Moo Moo Farm should have been. There's an actual farm in the background and you have cows crossing the track as you're racing on it. This is actually a farm where you have cows, you know, and you're interacting with them while racing at the same time. So I understand that this track has potential. And it also has a pretty wide skill gap, believe it or not. If you're just a casual racer, there's a lot of tech in this game that pro level players do that they can front run this track immediately and even with the shortcuts there are, that might not be enough to catch up. So all in all, putting everything together, Moo Moo Meadows is a pretty fun track to play, but at the same time, not the most entertaining or fun to look at. Oh man, so even though I love Rosalina as a character and I'm glad they've been implementing her in more Mario Kart games, they've kinda dropped the ball 
on her one and only track though. Besides that, Mario Galaxy 2 Hub World or the Comet Observatory above featured in this track in the background, this is just a generic ice track which tries to do a few things but overall falters in the grand scheme of things. You have this ice brick you can land on top of lap 1 to take this top ice path, but on laps 2 and 3 that thing's going to fall and you're taking this underwater path instead all the way to this ice cave which kind of has the same problem as Mario Kart 64 Sherbet Land. Not many enemies to worry about at all, not many scenery to look at, so just a boring path straight to the finish line as they try to finish making this track. And in my opinion, that just kind of doesn't do it for me. It's an ice track and some of them can be very fun, but this one just goes on for a bit too long and it's not as challenging as the Special Cup track should be, so that's why it's down here on this list. And once again, there's another intro track to this series, we have Luigi Raceway from Mario Kart 64, which falls quite a few positions, dropping 17 after being ranked 107 5 years ago. So what is it with this track? It has a very, very fun glitch, which I've seen Abney317 do on stream quite a few times and is very entertaining to watch, which requires an item and you can just skip the entire track. And it's one of many Mario Kart 64 tracks with an awesome glitch that you can pull off and you can even skip this corner right here by using a mushroom and jumping at the correct angle. But besides that, this track doesn't really have too much. What am I looking at right now? Grass, the road, the sky. You see this in a lot of Mario Kart tracks and I just don't find it inspiring. It may go for some entertaining races, but that's about it for this track. Now coming up at 123, we have the nominee for the most boring and generic name of any Mario Kart track ever, Water Park from Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and or the Switch. Now this track is kind of fun. I don't really know how to articulate it correctly, but you are in anti-gravity mode for most of the track as you are riding up almost what looks almost like a ferris wheel, but you're definitely not on a ferris wheel. I don't know what to call it. It's more like a roller coaster which takes you above and underwater. Besides that though, there's not much to enjoy. The shortcut, it's useless, and the track, again, slow underwater physics. It's got beautiful scenery, but the song and the music is not even that great, so it has to be down here because I never really enjoy myself when playing this track because there's so many other good ones to play. So when you're playing online in Mario Kart Wii, there are only two types of people that pick Luigi Circuit. Those that hit random and random just somehow happens to pick Luigi Circuit, or you got trolls who maybe just want to screw up and have a lot of fun, maybe get an accidental first because they know they're not good enough to get first in any of the other skill based tracks. Luigi Circuit, again, another beginner track, another intro track in this bottom 29 alone, which is crazy. It has one good shortcut and a little bit of elevation, but besides that, again, boring, uninspiring, the music's not even that fun, and of all the other tracks, not the one to pick. So coming up in 11 squared place, we have Shy Guy Beach from Mario Kart Super Circuit, dropping 10 spots from its previous 111 in 2017. So this is a pretty easy track and I think I know why. Despite having too many enemies here with the crabs and the shy guys peltering you with the cannons which will destroy you if you get hit by them, it does have a lot of room for comeback potential which is why as opposed to the other short beach tracks which I love, this one just doesn't hit it for me because maybe the scenery is not there and there's too many item boxes which will allow last place to catch up the first and therefore not make it as fun or as interesting. Coming in at 120 is DK's Jungle Parkway taking quite the fall. It is a pretty difficult track, but that doesn't explain why it's down low. It's just it had a lot of potential. Yes, it has a really, really cool glitch at the beginning of the track, but first off is this cannon strike. You have to be perfect with it or else you are going to either fall in the water or get stuck right here like I did trying to make something out of nothing. Another thing is, is that you can't take many shortcuts on this track. If you so manage to cut off a few bits of grass between here and there, you might get lucky, but other times you might get pelted by a seed or a berry or whatever it is that you get hit by that will cause your ghost data to not save no matter what time you get. And that's just really frustrating because you should allow the player to take the shortcut with ease and not have to worry about, you know, going into a certain part of grass. So of all that, I think it's not cool. Alright ladies and gents, and we have another Mario Kart Double Dash track on the list. We have Dry Dry Desert. 
Now this is a pretty fun track by the looks of it. It's got a very interesting map shape and it does a lot with it. You have a giant tornado as you can see coming straight at you. One of the most unique enemies in a Mario Kart track to date. Because if you go into it, then you are flying way up into the sky. But you're not completely damaged though. And then this is pretty much the equivalent of the Starlack Pit in Star Wars. If you've ever seen Star Wars before, you definitely don't want to go in there. That is instant death for you guys. But... Besides that, this track does not really have much going for it. It has crazy off-road shortcuts, but again, you only have a limited amount of shrooms, so you can't really take advantage of it, and it's just your basic Mushroom Cup Desert track. What can I say? So this is a track that I can appreciate for a couple of reasons. It is heavily inspired by World 2 and Super Mario Bros. 3. It even has the Angry Sun, which spits out Fire Snakes, both of which were enemies in Super Mario Bros. 3, and it has the Square Block Pyramids, so a lot of credit goes to Desert Hills for bringing back those Super Mario Bros. 3 vibes, but that's about where it goes for Desert Hills and how much fun it is to play. Because as I've said, it's not a great track to play overall, whether you're playing time trials as I am doing right here, or if you're playing against a group of friends or the computers, not one of those tracks that you really want to pick often because it just doesn't seem to do a lot for you. The scenery is there and the inspiration is there, but the function is not. And finally, we land on the last track of the video, Cheap Cheap Beach from Mario Kart DS, going up a surprising 16 spots. I didn't think this track was going to go up this high, but I guess it deserves it because for a beach track, it's pretty interesting. It takes Shy Guy Beach and Koopa Troopa Beach and a little bit of Peach Beach as well, combines them all into one, and it does a pretty good job. Yeah, there's a few ramps here and there, there's not as many enemies as there possibly could be, but you know, what can you say, it's a Mushroom Cup track, you even got this little leaf section, this foresty section towards the end of the track, and that's pretty much all you can say for the track. Not great, but not bad. And guys, that is going to do it for my top 145 marker tracks of all time, at least the bottom 29. I'm splitting this up into five videos this time instead of for eight. I want to cover more tracks per video, and I think this is worth it. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you enjoyed. Be sure to give it a like, and if you're looking forward to this series, let me know in the comments below because I will see you guys very soon.